Wank Life Event 2024 in Forge of Empires. The Wank Life Event 2024 in Forge of Empires is themed around the untamed heart of Africa this time. It seems to me to be very much inspired by Lake Nakuru National Park in Kenya. For those who are interested in what it really looks like there, I have linked the corresponding video from my YouTube channel Kenya Info below the video. The event essentially follows what we already know from previous years, but with a few additions. The Forge of Empires Wildlife Event 2024 is all about collecting wildlife tickets and wildlife coins. You can then use the wildlife tickets to start a minigame and gain special advantages with the wildlife coins. The event starts with 200 wildlife coins and 4 wildlife tickets. You will receive a further 20 wildlife coins for logging in each day. As usual, there is a series of event quests divided into two parts. First, you solve 30 immediate quests. They each reward you with 10 wildlife coins. Once you have completed all the immediate quests, you can then tackle the daily quests, one of which is unlocked every day, even if it still has to wait in the background until the immediate quests have been completed. For completing these 30 daily quests, you will receive 20 wildlife coins or a wildlife ticket. The astonishing length of this event is the first significant change. As always, the quests are in the first pinned comment below the video. The incidents in and around the city can occasionally yield either wildlife coins or wildlife tickets. Once again, it is highly recommended to complete the daily challenges in this event. You can then start the minigame with a ticket. It shows 8x11 colored stones. If you click on a group of 2, 3 or 4 adjacent stones of the same color, they are removed from the game and all the stones above them slide down accordingly. If you click on a tile in a larger continuous group of the same color, this tile is replaced by a box and all other tiles in this group are removed from the game. The box then contains a prize, which is all the more interesting the larger the group of tiles was. However, prizes are only awarded when they fall from the bottom of the board into the bowls. The aim is therefore to remove groups of tiles from the game in such a way that the prizes move purposefully downwards and can then be collected. The second major change in this year's event is a significant simplification of the game. There are tiles in five different colors. In each individual game, however, only four of the five colors occur at random. This makes it easier to form large groups of stones. This creates a greater sense of achievement and therefore more fun. In addition, more crates simply bring more rewards. Crates also offer a chance to win the daily special. Experience has shown that the order of the daily specials changes compared to the beta server, but the selection usually remains the same. If you don't like the daily special on a particular day, you can replace it with an alternative daily special. In addition to the generated crates, there are also paws. The main focus should be on these paws, as they bring us closer to the main price of the event, step by step or paw by paw. However, it can be very difficult to achieve this. That's why there are three different tools. At the beginning, you get tools of which four hammers, two leaf lines and a lightning bolt remain after the tutorial. You can buy further tools individually 
or assets with the coins you collected in the game. The hammer specifically removes a single tile from the game. It is a tool of choice when there is little left to make the price plummet. The effect of the hammer is very straightforward and it will be particularly popular with those who are less able to imagine the effects of the more complex tools. This is a simple version of the game and will probably be used by most players. If you are more ambitious, you can, of course, also use the other two tools and achieve a lot more with them. Only then does it make sense to buy tools in the more attractively priced sets and not just buy hammers individually. The leaf line removes an entire horizontal line from the game and in most cases is applied to the bottom row of stones. The lightning bolt removes all tiles of the color of the tile clicked on from the game. As a result, stones move up everywhere. This can mean enormous progress. However, some players find it difficult to imagine the effects of this move and to recognize which new constellations can be used afterwards. In this event, I found that the best way to get by was to only buy the hammer and use it in good doses from time to time. I didn't buy any packs of tools despite the discount they offered. You can also extend the game with the wildlife coins you collect. I generally warn against hanging on to a game for too long. Only extend the game if it is very clear that paws are sure to drop afterwards. There will be an additional mini event three times during the event. There are numerous tools and more to be won in this event. It is therefore worth going full throttle on each of these three times two days and saving up tools for this phase. There are a total of three golden tickets from the milestones in the quest series. If you activate one of the golden tickets, you can play against the clock for five minutes. During these five minutes, you can start as many minigames as you like without using any ticket. This can result in considerable progress. Now it is more important to play quickly than perfectly. This year's main prize is the Flamingo Habitat with a 4x5 footprint. It can be upgraded to level 11 with the corresponding upgrade kits and then provides happiness as well as up to 60 goods and 23 forge points daily when motivated. There are also numerous combat bonuses, up to 15% attack bonus for the attacking army, up to 15% attack bonus in guild battlegrounds, up to 20% defense bonus for the attacking army and up to 20% defense bonus in guild battlegrounds. The building also produces 5 silver fragments for the 12th upgrade of this building to the Serene Flamingo Habitat. This then has further improved values and produces 5 fragments daily for Golden Upgrade Kit. The Golden Upgrade Kit can then be used to reach level 13 of the building the Serene Flamingo Paradise with even better stats. The two upgraded levels each have a daily chance to produce either some of the 100 required fragments of the Habitat Journey Selection Kit or an Alligator Swamp Upgrade Kit, even if no alligators live in Africa. Nile crocodiles live in Lake Nakuru and if you don't know the difference, here's a tip. The crocodile is the animal next to the alligator. The 13th, it as highest level of the building, has a daily chance of producing some of the 100 fragments required for a tapir path upgrade kit. Oh yes, tapirs don't live in Africa either. But Inu Games seems to handle this very generously. This long event is more forgiving of not going full throttle for a day. So it will certainly not only be fun for all players, but 
will also provide a particularly powerful new building for the city in the long term.